All right, welcome back to chapter six. This is part two of module seven, okay? Um, and so now we're gonna really turn to quantum mechanics and the atomic orbitals, okay? And so we're gonna start off with what's termed the uncertainty principle, okay? Which really says it's impossible for us to know simultaneously both the momentum and the location of the electron, okay? However, we can actually describe the probability of an electron within a certain region of space, okay? Um, at a given instant using what's termed quantum mechanics. So this is what we call the probability density or the electron density. And when we talk about this, we can think of electrons as clouds of electron density. Okay, and so that's what's shown down here in this bottom left figure. Okay, so we have basically a cloud of electron density, which is the probability that the electron exists within this region. Okay, and so the area of probability density of an electron is called the orbital. So this is an orbital shown here. Okay? Most atoms have many orbitals. Each orbital has a characteristic shape and energy, and we're going to take a look at those different orbitals. There's the s orbital, the p orbital, the d orbital, and the f orbital. And we'll take a look at each one of those. And so the wave function is basically what's shown here on the left, which is um, equations which really describe these orbitals. Okay? One thing to note is one orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay? That's key. Make sure you remember that. All right, so when we talk about orbitals and we talk about quantum numbers, okay, well, each orbital describes the spatial distribution of electron density. So we can think of it with that last figure where we look at, you know, a cloud of electron density. And an orbital can be described by a set of quantum numbers. So what is a quantum number? Well, it really just gives the position of the electron. The easiest way I think to think about this is if you think of a seat at a football stadium. You go to a game, you have your ticket, you know, which is your orbital, okay? And it tells you quantum number. It tells you the s where your seat is, right? It gives you a section number, a row number, and a seat number. So here we have N, which is our principal quantum number, okay? We have L, the angular momentum quantum number, M sub L, which is the magnetic quantum number, and M sub S, which is the spin magnetic quantum number. And so we can break each one of these down and think about what it means. But there's a set of four quantum numbers for each orbital. So first we can look at the n, which is a principal quantum number. And you can think of this as just telling you a section number in a stadium. So it's this larger region where it tells you, okay, your seat is in this region. Okay? These, can, these always have a positive integral number, uh, such as 1, 2, 3, etc. And as n increases, the orbital becomes larger. So if you remember the figure we drew earlier, where we had the little circle, that was n equals 1, then we got to n equals 2, n equals 3, and they keep getting larger. Okay? And as they become larger, the electrons are farther from the nucleus, and the electron has a higher energy. So for n equals 1, we're in that first electron shell, which means that we have an s orbital. n equals 2, we're in the second electron shell, and in the second electron shell, we have both s and p orbitals. Okay? Well, how do we know what orbitals are present? Well, that's from the L, the angular momentum quantum number, okay, which is our row number. So now we're kind of narrowing down where our seat is. Now we're in the row number. Okay, and these can have integral values from 0 to n minus 1 for each value of n. Okay? And this number really tells us the shape of the orbital, which we have, s, p, d, or f. Okay? And so if the value of L is 0, 1, 2, or 3, that pertains to either s, p, d, or an f orbital. Okay? So then we can go on to m sub L, which is the magnetic quantum number. And this tells you your exact seat number. Okay, so now it's really dialing in on where you're going to sit, where that electron's being placed. Okay, and so these can have integral values which are from minus L to L, okay, and that includes zero. So this number describes the orientation of the orbital space. Okay, so if you have L equals 1, that means M sub L can be minus L to plus L. So minus 1 to plus 1 with zero included. L equals 2, that means M sub L is equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, etc. Okay. The last number is basically if you're sitting up or down in the chair. Okay. It's M sub S, the spin magnetic quantum number. It tells you the spin the electron has. Okay. So this can have one of two values. We either say plus 1 half or minus 1 half, either an up arrow or a down arrow. Okay. So if we take a look at this more um, by visualizing these different orbitals, and then we'll look at these quantum numbers and really look and understand how these are assigned. So the first one we're going to talk about is the s orbital. It's named s because it's spherical. Okay? 
Um, and basically the electron density at a given distance from the nucleus is the same regardless of the direction in which we proceed from the nucleus, right? So it's basically a circle. So no matter which direction you go, the probability of the electrons in that region is pretty much the same, okay? The L quantum number for the s orbital is zero, right? So we said that the, um, if we go back here, we said the angular momentum quantum number L, basically whatever that value is, tells us the orbital. So s orbitals always have a zero L quantum number. Right. <clears throat> which means that the m sub l must also be zero because it's from minus l to l, but if it's zero, then we only have one value for m sub l. The p orbital has two lobes with one node. Okay, it has a total of three orbitals. Okay, uh, these three orbitals are px, py, and pz, and that's basically just on what axes these p orbitals exist. So this is px, which has on the x axis we have pz and we have py. Each of these have one node, which is where they intersect in the middle, and they have two lobes, okay? So you can think of this two balloons that are attached together and those sticking out, okay? The probability the electron exists in this region or this region, okay? These are all dumbbell shaped. Then you have the D and F orbitals. These are five, um, or there's five D orbitals. Four of these have four lobes, so you can see that these kind of exist a little more complex. So the DYZ, the DXZ, DXY, dx2y2, and then the dz2 is just a ring, okay? So that's the other, so four of them have four lows, and then one of them is like this donut, okay? The f orbital is more complex, okay? So you should understand how these exist in space, what that means based on these different orbitals, and so forth. So now we can take a look at what's the relationship between these four quantum numbers, okay? Let's first take the example that n is equal to one, okay? which means we're in the first shell, so that first circle, inner circle. The possible values of L are um, <clears throat> um, zero to n minus one, which is just zero, right? And so that subshell means that we have n equals one, which means that we're in the first shell, and the value of L, which is zero, means that we have an s orbital, so it's one s, okay? Well, the possi possible values of m sub l are from minus l to l, which here is zero, so that's zero as well, which says that we only have one orbital in the subshell, okay? Because it's the s, we only have one possibility. So this total number is one, okay? We can also do this for n equals two, which means that we have a possible value of zero to n minus one, which means zero and one, okay? If we use those l values and translate that, zero means that we have an s subshell, a 1 means we have a p subshell, so we have 2s and 2p because we're still in the 2 uh, in the second shell. s, we know this 2s with an l value of 0 means that we just have 0 here, and if we have a 1 for the l, that means we have 1, 0, and minus 1, and these three values pertain to the px, py, and pz subshell orbitals, okay? So we have a number, three total subshells in this one orbital. We only have one in the s, and so we have a total of four, okay? So when we talk about electron shells, it's just a collection of orbitals with the same value of n, and a subshell is just the set of orbitals that have the same n and l uh, numbers. Okay. A couple notes are listed below. Um, you should be familiar with those as well. All right, so to kind of summarize this bit, quantum numbers of an electron are like a seat number on a train or a seat number in a stadium. Okay. And really, we can think about this with a Pauli exclusion principle, that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers, okay? An orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, and they must have opposite spins, okay? And that's termed the Pauli exclusion principle. And what it also says is that, basically, orbitals are going to be filled sequentially, okay? With the lowest energy orbitals filling first, okay? And you can do this one of two ways. You can memorize the figure over here on the left. Okay, which shows that the lowest energy is the 1s, then we go to 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and so forth. Okay? Or you can remember it this way, where you just write 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, you list these out okay, for the shells, and then you just draw an arrow straight down, and you can see where these intersect. And so first you fill the 1s, then the 2s, then the 2p and the 3s, 3p and the 4s, then you go back to the 3d. Okay? And we'll talk about this more in, in a bit.